Hey everyone, my name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'll share two ways that I use to present PowerPoint and Teams. As you know, Teams offers many different ways we can share our screen. Teams has a specific share PowerPoint option, which works well most of the time. And I'll show you how to do this first. The second option, which I'll show you later, I use it specifically when the PowerPoint file is large. I'll show you why later, so be sure to stick around. Option one, when we're in a meeting, we can select the share content button to bring up the sharing options. We have a few different choices here, but we're gonna focus on the PowerPoint section. This section lists the most recent files we've opened or edited in our team SharePoint site or our OneDrive. If the file we want to present is not listed, we can select browse and either upload the file from our computer or OneDrive. This file will then get uploaded as part of the meeting and will appear in the Files tab. All members of the meeting will have access to this file, even after the meeting has ended. I personally don't like this Browse and Upload option. Maybe what we're presenting is work in progress and not quite ready to share yet. And even if we are ready to share, I prefer to have this document stored in a specific team channel with organized file structure where the team members can easily find it and not have more control over access rights. If the file is uploaded as part of the meeting, we'd have to remember which meeting the file is attached to in order to find it. I think it's good practice to prepare the file in advance so that it shows up in the recent list. So save the PowerPoint file to the appropriate OneDrive or Team SharePoint site folder first and open it to make it appear in the PowerPoint list as a recent file. We can then simply select from it. So before we select the file to present, note there is a toggle here to include computer sound. If our presentation includes slides with audio, we need to enable computer sound, otherwise the participants will not hear the audio from the slide content. With that said, enabling this option will include all computer sound, so be sure to turn off notification and other alerts that may cause disruption during the presentation. All right, so when we finally select the PowerPoint to present, we'll see this presenter view by default. We have our current slide showing on the left, our notes on the right, and the slide thumbnails on the bottom. Again, this is in presenter view, so other people won't see this layout. They'll only see the current PowerPoint slide in full screen. So let's look at some of the controls here. We can use these navigation arrows to move through the slides. It displays how many slides are in the presentation and which slide we're currently presenting. The grid view, as the name suggests, will show all slides in a grid. This is helpful if you want to jump to different slides. We can of course do this using the thumbnail strip on the bottom, but if we have many slides in our presentation, the grid view is much more useful. For example, if we're jumping from slide 1 to slide 20. To return to the presenter view, we can X out of the screen. By the way, we can use the shortcut key G to toggle back and forth from the grid view to the presenter view. Note that the participants has the control to move through the different slides. If you want to restrict them to view only the slide that we're currently presenting, we can turn this option off. In the dot 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 menu, we have the option to hide the presenter view. When we do this, the current slide takes over the entire screen and we lose our thumbnail strip and the notes. We can of course return to the presenter view by hitting dot 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 again and choosing show presenter view. The second option in the dot 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 menu is to view slides in high contrast. This basically strips the color from the slides and show white text against the black background. Any images we have will of course remain unchanged. And this is just for the presenter view for better readability. The participants will not inherit this view and they'll see the slide as normal. So here we have an option to either increase or decrease the font size of our notes. This is just for the presenter notes that we alone can see. This is not to increase the size of the font in the presentation slides itself. When we want to stop presenting, we can select this button here. So 
So the second way I present PowerPoint in Teams is to use the window share option. I use this option for larger presentations with many slides and media files like video. The first thing I do before the presentation is to download a copy of the presentation to my local drive. So not in OneDrive or in Team SharePoint site. The reason for this is to reduce any issues we might run into with network connection and bandwidth. I find that when sharing files that are saved in Team SharePoint site, I often run into issues with lag. Sometimes the file that I'm sharing freezes altogether during the presentation. This is especially true when multiple users are logged into the PowerPoint that I'm presenting. If I download a local copy, the only person who has the file open would be me, and since I'm presenting directly from my computer's hard disk, it's able to read the file much faster, even if the file contains lots of media contents like video. The second thing I do is to compress the PowerPoint file size, really optimizing it for presentation over the internet. If you want to learn how to do this, click on the card above. Now we can start the slideshow. We can do this by clicking on the button here or using the shortcut F5. When we do this, we'll end up with two different windows for our PowerPoint file. One showing the slideshow and the other showing the normal view with the thumbnail side pane. A second monitor comes in handy here. Now when we're in the meeting and ready to share our screen, same as before, select the share content button to bring up the sharing options. This time, rather than selecting a file from the PowerPoint section, we'll select it from the window option. Remember, we'll see two PowerPoint windows here, so make sure to select the one that says Slideshow. This is the only window that will be visible to the participants. We can use the control buttons on the bottom left of the slideshow to navigate the slides, or simply use our keyboard left and right arrow to move through the presentation. Okay, so these are the two ways I present PowerPoint in Teams. Hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, hit that like button. And if you enjoy contents like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks and bye for now.